Okay, here we are at uh, my dad's and mother's house, Henrietta, Oklahoma. This is 23rd of July, 1982. We've just uh, been to Alabama, visit uh, Jan and Hank and their kids. We're going to visit here with the folks a couple days, and we're going to go on to National Law, North Carolina. This is my dad, sitting out here in the cool breeze. See that fan going? And I was about to ask you about uh, about Missouri. Dad's risen from Missouri. And uh, I remember uh, Monty and Harv, uh, we, when I was a little guy, we took vacation, went up there, and I remember Monty and Harv, and I remember, I remember the house they lived in, and, and uh, the fact that they had a well outside, and the fact that they had an outhouse out there that we went out to, those are the things I remember as a kid. And, uh, but I don't remember much about Monty, uh, or Harv, except Harv was getting where he could hardly hear, I remember. But I know they were, they were interesting people, and that's an interesting area up there, and I've heard a lot of stories out of Dad about it. Now I'll try to get him here to talk about it some. <laughs> well, I don't know what to talk about. Well, yeah, no, tell me, tell me where you were born. What was, in, what was the name of the town? Salem. Sa Salem, Salem, Missouri. Missouri. Okay. Dent County. Which county? Dent. Dent? Dent County. Okay. Mitt was up there last time. I hadn't been up there in 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, no. Was I only five? I guess you were. You were with just a baby. Great day. That's the last time I was up there. But Mitt was up there, and he said that they had nothing like it. Well, everything's new. Everything's new everywhere. Yeah. See, uh, Salem was really a booming town. Yeah. They got, it's a county seat town, and the only one, all them smelters and zinc plants that started around there. Yeah. And that's the county seat town. It's really cool. Hey, a seven-story old hotel where? Out there where we used to raise corn. Oh, yeah. Way, it was way out in the country then, out right in the middle of the town. Oh, we don't. Used to have one, my grandpa had pulled a policeman up there, now they got, I think, about 15 police cars. That's a car running down the road there, truck road. Did the, uh, is your grandpa the one that had that, that had that revolver that you got? Yeah. Well, I couldn't remember. I've been telling people it was a peace officer, but I couldn't remember how far back. Yeah, it was, yeah. Carrying that thing was about worn out. Yeah, and he could, and he, and he kept the peace wear in uh, Salem? In Salem, yeah. He was, he was the marshal or the sheriff all the time when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I used to go up there in the courthouse all the time listening to them speak for it. Oh, you did? So they had the Democratic conventions. I went there and won them when I was a little bitty kid. Is that right? Yeah, they were strong Democrats. In fact, I was 16 years old before I ever heard the name Republican when my mother washed my mouth out with soap and water. That's <laughs> <laughs> about all I know about it. No, no, it ain't either. I want to hear about uh, about Maxie. I heard that story. Now I was told on you. Granny Jack told me. No, well, I don't know what that was. Don't you remember in Maxie's diary? I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I never had heard of that. Yeah, I made up a lot of tales that I never had heard. Oh, was that right? That wasn't true, huh? Shoot, I used to go down to Harbor Mining down on the river and stay all summer during school vacations. Yeah. Because Harbor lets you do anything big enough. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Shoot. You want to take the gun and go, he was, he was with you. Yeah. <laughs> A little bitty old kid, if you're big enough to carry it, they're just fine with him. <laughs> do anything you want to with hard. That's about all I remember about it. Well, when you got older, you know, you got that. How far, how far in school did you go? Eighth grade. Eighth grade, then, and then you what? Did what? I was out here when I was 15 years old. You came out here when you were 15? Yeah. Was there, a, the roads were dirt? 
dirt roads then? Lord, yeah, the road was dirt. We yeah. had a you had quite a trip to get to from here to Old Smoky. Is we that had right? An all day trip up there tonight. Oh, was that right? Sand in that river bottom up there was. Yeah, you couldn't know how to fill it with a Model T. You mean you ran the river bottom? Well, you had to go through the deep part bottom to get those mugs. Well, there was a road there, wasn't it? Yeah, right through the river bottom. Oh, that's right. Wasn't great, it wasn't no highway. <laughs> I took old Sir Crow's Cadillac to Tulsa for him one night. He owned the Crow Coal Company here. And he hired me to take his Cadillac to Tulsa because it rained all week. And there wasn't no road from here to Tulsa. Yeah. Boy, I plowed mud with that cat Cadillac train car. There wasn't no sedans then. Uh -uh. I plowed mud with the Tulsa in that car that night. I'll be darned. Big old Cadillac. Well, when you first came down here, how did you get here? You're 15 years old. Did you come by yourself? I come up with Grandpa and Dennis. That was my mother's daughter. Oh, you did? I came down here with him. What was he doing down here? Yeah, down here. He moved, he, he moved out here. What did what is he doing? That working in the coal mine or something or what? No, he was uh, had a little dairy selling milk. He had a dairy here locally? Well, he just sold milk out of his house like they used to do all the time. Oh yeah? Did, did, did he live up there where uh, Granny Jack uh, used to live there? Where Laverta lives now? Oh no. He lived uh, up on top, up on the hill. Oh, that's right. I remember. That's the place that burned down, wasn't it? Up on the hill. I don't know if it burned down or not, but that's where he lives. Well, he said, over there where, uh, uh, is up there on, uh, up there on Fifth, is it up on Fifth Street, right to the right, or Seventh Street to the right, uh, left up there? Is that where he yep. used to live? Yeah, it's, uh, it's up there closer to, it's on top of the hill, I imagine closer to, 10th Street or 12th. Oh. Up in, there wasn't no houses up there then, but wasn't nothing up on the hill. The house isn't there now, is it? No, I don't think so, no. Yeah, there wasn't a thing on that hill. When we lived on the hill, there wasn't nothing up there after the folks moved out here. Mm. I was out here two or three years before they came out here. Did, did uh, your grandpa build the place himself? I don't think so. Well, up there, where do you where do you have his dairy? Well, we just where do you have his he cat? just had a barn like everybody else did. Then oh, he didn't have no dairies. He had better stuff than he got at the dairies. He had fewer stuff. <laughs> well, dairies are doctored so bad you don't know what you get. Well, what'd you do when you came out here at fifteen? I worked for a, a retreaded tire, a vulcanized tire, for quarter. C. Porter Star Search. Right there where the library is now. Back in those days, Henrietta was going to be a pretty good sized place, wasn't it? Henrietta had about two and a half times as much population as they've got now. And they got what, about 6,000 now? Well, they claim 6,400, but they took in two miles in every direction yeah. to try to get it. Of course, you get welfare by the number of people you got, see. And so back in those days, it, what were they doing down? Coal mining? And that was a big deal? Yeah, there's 3,000 coal miners here then. They used to be at Pert and as many kids going to school here as they is town as they is population now. We no, had schoolhouses all the way around town. Hmm. Didn't have no buses, so they didn't, they didn't feed them, they took lunch with them. Yeah. <laughs> didn't have all that honey to do. So you, uh, you started working at a, at a Retread? Yeah, Vulcanized and retread tires. Well, I remember seeing the picture books with that big tire. That was at the service station, wasn't it? Yeah. That tire belonged to Goodyear Tire and Was yeah. that uh, at the Vulcan? That wasn't at the Vulcanizing right job. Right in front of it. Well, that's where you, that were, you were working at this thing? Pic yeah. The picture, that picture was took right in front of it. In a Model T pickup. In a Model T pickup. You looked older than 15 now. <laughs> You've worked there a while? I worked there for years and years. It sold out two or three times, and I stayed with it. And after Luke's up here to Hudson's Corner, it was that was the same thing. 
Oh. Then later on, I had some thought of When did you start? When did you start that motorcycle? Is that when you were vulcanizing tires? Oh yeah, that was in 1927 and 28. That, that was. I went over and bought that new motorcycle. That's the first motorcycle that had a front wheel brake on it. Is that right? That was the first year. And everybody said, you kill you, kill you, kill you. <laughs> Mash on that front brake. First one. 1927. It was a 1928 model, but I got it in, got it bought in the winter time. <laughs> then Sid went over to Muskogee and got it. Hey, now you're talking about Sid Haynes? Yeah. When, were you work, was he working there with you to stay at the... Sid uh, Haynes was Buffalo? cashier at the Union National Bank in Oak Mulgee at the time. Is that right? Was yeah. he driving back and forth? He rode his motorcycle back and forth those days. Through the, through, on the dirt road? No, that was later on. That's when oh. he had a little payment about 15, 18 feet wide. Oh. That was a whole lot later. And you guys, uh, okay, just about the kids back, back in the backyard playing with the hose. I'm gonna go back there and get them on there, and I'm gonna come back and, and talk to you some more. <laughs> okay? I ain't got nothing to tell you. Yes, you do. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, I'll this, got a terrific outbuilding out here. Boy, I'd give anything to have one like that at home. It's really nice. He's got uh, room in there to do all kinds of work. Yeah. Plus, his mother stores her little car in there. <laughs> Come on, sweetie, walk out here. Let me oh, get you I don't want my yeah, she I've been trying on my clothes. I Come bought on them down here. While ago. I went shopping a while ago. Yeah. Bought Start. me four blouses, so I had to try them on again. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> Enjoying our visit. Oh, okay. Yep. So far. So far, yeah. So far. <laughs> Okay. So the boys. Oh, they got Come on, give me five. This thing up here is on the microphone. What's that little square box on the side? This is the uh, video monitor, so I can see. It's a little, uh, a little TV. It's just like the TV in there, and I can see here what I'm getting through the lens. So I can see you very plainly through here, you know. That's the way I can tell if I'm focused up or not. Because this has got 12 to 1 zoom in it. And sometimes it doesn't focus real good. I <laughs> do it manually. But I, I, I got you pretty good now. Well, you tell we were we were back and we we're talking. Sid Haynes, uh, 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 you had, you had a motorcycle in 1927, and, and uh, went over. I went over and bought that new one and started back. And it was cold weather, winter time. All he had was just gravel. There wasn't no pavement nowhere. So, where did you buy it? Muskogee. Oh, Muskogee. That was a long trip in them days, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, you had to go where to get it. Go so there, where or up to Tulsa. It's about what, 60 miles? 75 miles from Muskogee? Well, 60, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, he said, he, he said, I, well, let, him, let me ride it. And I said, okay, I'll ride it. Boy, we come out of town there about. 25, 30 miles. He stopped. He's about free. He said, you, "You get up here and drive it a while, ride in front, and off the rims off of me." <laughs> I got up there and I started racking her back down that gravel road, and boy, that's one of them flopping spells like that motorcycles you do when they hit loose gravel. Yeah. I went across the ditch and up and down the side of the fence for about a hundred yards. Hello. And I said, I'd have jumped off if I could have seen that. <laughs> I was sitting in his lap, he couldn't jump. Yeah. It's not going to Mike, let, let your grandpa talk. Some okay. deal on motorcycle. But I tell you, you talk about it. That spotted pony that you had up, that you had a picture of up there at Hanks. Yeah. That spotted pony I had. Me and Junior Williams were riding one day and we stopped on top of the hill. Had this little airport. I knew how it was on the hill then. Now, when was this? I, that was when I was uh, where I was in school. I was yeah. in high school, wasn't it, or something? Yeah, I was in school. About 1950, around there somewhere? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Well, Junior riding Radiboy uh, horse. Uh-huh. So we stopped up at that little old airplane. They hauled rides for a dollar. 
in the middle of the airplane. There's an old woman and three girls come out there. And they wanted to see that horse, and I had to set each one of them girls up on that horse because they wanted to take her picture. So the last one that was sitting up there taking the picture said, do you, you care if I ride him? And I said, not if you can, I don't. I said, can you ride it? And she said, yes. And I asked that old lady, I said, can she ride a horse? Oh, she rides all the time. So she just kicked that horse Telling like family that. family secrets. <laughs> and from, oh, yeah. from the airport to the top of that hill, that little horse looked like a ball rolling. I never saw a horse run that fast. <laughs> and she was still riding. And the junior said, you want me to catch it? And I said, no, it's going home. <laughs> you, can't, you can't catch it. You ain't Who was riding it? That little gal up there on the hill. And she circled it in the woods up there. At the top of Ninth Street and come back and me and Junior headed it all. Is that? <laughs> and I said, I'll say one thing, little girl, you can ride. She said, Well, I ride all the time, but I would never rode a spirited animal like that. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when uh, Billy borrowed the old horse and took it up on the hill and walked back home with it? Yeah, it and he couldn't get back home. <laughs> Yeah, he come home leading him, and, uh, and uh, where the bit had cut its mouth, it was bleeding. That was Billy Canatcher. Yeah. That's my mother's brother. <laughs> okay, time for foolishness is over, Dave. I'm I'm taking pictures of him. I'm trying to get some, get him to say something. Dad, what? Can we just take one more picture? Move, please. Go on. They've been out. All right, Hersey. They've been out. <laughs> now go on. If she let it walk off, it'd been all right. But she started just like she always rode, I guess. She just put it up in the ring and kicked it. Whenever she kicked it, Lord, it jumped 20 feet the first week. Yeah. <laughs> the baddest flew. Did uh, uh, see back. You, work, you were working at the service station? And, uh, I wasn't at the mother then. No, I mean, back to, I'm back with the motorcycles again. <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah. guys you guys rode motorcycles for what, about five years or so? Or? I guess so, a long time. And you guys took a took trip? You went to Galveston on didn't you? Oh, yeah, we went all over the western part of the country on them. Oh, there wasn't no road nowhere. Just a little stretch of pavement inside this town when you come to a town. <laughs> the rest of it was all dirt and sand and gravel. Get kind of muddy. We got down there in the black land of Texas one time, and I was going to trade that thing for a bus ticket. <laughs> Sid wouldn't let me. <laughs> Sid wouldn't let you. <laughs> you were through riding. Well, you couldn't ride. <laughs> you had a foot out on each side, and your feet weigh 50 pounds. <laughs> that little sticky mud on there. Yes, Dad, but I the front go wheel on. never around, never turned around. My goodness, just slide. Am I going to wait here now? Well, no, not yet. I'm not. Just on the family. Oh, we down there below San Antonio somewhere. Giant sandy country. <laughs> <laughs> Who said you understand why he couldn't keep his chain oil? Boy, it did look like it made out of silver. We pulled up in the middle of the street brush there to rest a little while in the shade. He spit on that chain and just sizzled like he spit on a red hot stove. He said, no wonder they're all the same. <laughs> God, that thing is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't have that. Um, we down there on, we riding on the beach down there, running up and down the beach, running over with jellyfish and guys are trained out. Some woman come down there with her boy, and she said that her boy had always won one of them motorcycles, and she'd have paid for him to have it. And I said, well, I don't know why. It's the safest thing in the world. Much safer than an automobile. you got control of it. She said, well, I don't know about that. I've heard a lot of stories about him. And I said, well, get on behind this boy right here. He's a whole lot better rider than I am. Get on behind him, let him take you up and down the beach here. All right. He'll show you how, how, how they ride. Let me see if this thing. <laughs> I turned out there and laughed him hauling that old lady up and down that beach. <laughs> 
You guys, uh, was this before you had your Model A? Yeah, that's when Model A come out. Model A didn't come out until 1928. Yeah, I remember uh, seeing in those picture books. You guys uh, in your suits. You travel in your suits when you went by the car all the time? It seemed like you were in a tie and everything. That's the way you travel in, in those days? No. No? Would you just put those on for the camp, for the pictures? <laughs> Is that right? You couldn't travel like that. Do that. You catch hold of that hot wind and burn your face. You catch hold of the air right there and just hurl. Sunburn, sunburn. Now, I was talking about traveling in the car. Oh, in the car, yeah. yeah. those pictures I saw, I think you're up at Pikes Peak, weren't you? Oh yeah, we were on top of Pike's Peak two or three times. Did you drive Model A's up there? No, we were. Well, when we was up there, when me and Ralph had them pictures, we had his Chevrolet as a new 1928 model Chevrolet, four-cylinder Chevrolet. Oh, was that, that Ralph who? Swagger. Oh, that's uh, the guy that had the motorhome that came down to this. That was Ralph Swagger, right? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. He had a heart attack. He had heart trouble when he was here, you know, and he was work. Yeah. Big, stout looking man. So, uh... He was fishing out up in the mountains or somewhere. If he'd have been in, at home or around, he lived in Colorado Springs. And, well, I think he got him to the hospital, but that's, he had his heart attack and he was way back up there in the mountains fishing. Yeah. So, if he could get a hold of the ranger and get him out of there, he was dead. Probably done. But uh, when you guys were up there at uh, Pikes Peak, uh, did you travel the way you uh, you looked in those pictures? Sure. You, you, you traveled in shirt and tie and, sure. and your coats and everything, huh? Sure. Well, you guys looked pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, that's the way we were. I'll be gone. That's, that was back before you met my mother, wasn't it? Oh, a long time. A long time? You guys uh, used to, who was it you used to fish with? You used to fish with Sid, right? Fish. Go down the Kai Mission? Oh yeah, fish down the mountain with Sid a whole lot. Yeah. We put his side draw on my motorcycle because my motorcycle was bigger than him. Yeah. And I had the biggest, well, I had the same one the policeman ride. Oh, you did? Yeah. It was still a 74 one. Right? He, he, had, he a, had a side car. And we put his side draw on my motorcycle so we could haul all this equipment. Huh. Did you did you uh, use the plug fish or, or trot line or what? No. Both. Mostly plugging down there in the mountain for yeah. Did well if you went down a motorcycle, what'd you do? Did you wade or off the bank or what? Well sure we waded. They didn't know what a boat was back in them days. Nobody <laughs> ever heard of a boat. You'd wade down through there and if you stepped up over your head, you just paddle a little bit and you got where you can wade again. Oh, is that right? Well, did, uh, when did you get that boat? I remember seeing pictures of the boat. That was out here at the lake, wasn't it, here in Henrietta? Yeah, yeah that was after that. Mm -hmm. That was after that. Made that boat, me and, Sid, me and Fred Jones. Oh, you did? I made it. Were you uh, still single then? Oh, yeah. So how'd you, how'd you, uh, how'd you go about meeting Mother? Oh, I don't remember. <coughs> it was a long time after that. I didn't have no motorcycle then. No motorcycle? No, it was a long time after motorcycle days. Oh. Yeah, I bought four brand new Model A Ford. Oh, you did? First Ford I bought was in 1922. It was a Model T Roadster. Is that right? And I drove it back to Salem. Is that right? Took two hard days driving to get Salem. Now in those days was uh, Grand Jack and all the rest of the family still back there? Yeah. You were out here by yourself? Yeah. With uh, Granny's father, who lived here local? Hey, Dennis. No, he never did go with me. Yeah. Yes? You, you come in here and take a picture of my lovely supper. Okay. We're going to take a break and go get something to eat. Okay, we'll get it. <laughs> this is an excellent interview. Yes, it is. It sure is. Oh, Lord, it is. Come in, Dennis. All right. Boy. 
Okay, it's uh, about time to eat here. Yeah, I'm, I'm notorious for resuming, so I'm... Boy, that looks like good, good food there. It really does. I smell corn. Mm. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Isn't that pretty? That I'm corn's so courtesy of, uh, of the Grissoms up there yeah. in Alabama. Yeah. Nice of them to do it. Bagel, you hungry? Have some bread? Yes, oh, go down that way. Go wash hands first, bud. Oh, okay. Okay. Tell me, now, your, uh, okay, boys. where did your grandfather, was your grandfather from Missouri, or did they come from some other state? Well, my grandfather was from Missouri. But his, boys, his father was an officer in the Confederate Army. Are you taking Yeah. Go ahead. Excuse me. His uh, father was my great grandfather. Officer in the Confederate Army? He was, he was a captain, yeah. That's your grandfather's father? Yeah. Captain in the Confederate Army. Was he from Missouri, too? Yeah. Well, I don't know where he came from originally, but he was in Missouri at the time. Uh -huh. They might have come from the east of there, most of them did. I don't know. But you kind of lose track back when you, for your great grandfather, huh? About where they came from? Well, I don't guess I ever knew. I don't hmm. well, guess so. If I did, I didn't know. Hmm. Well, that's been interesting. <laughs> you got anything else you want to say? No. I've done said too much now, I think. No, no you haven't. That's where I was yeah, raised. Most of my, my younger life was right here, except it uh, didn't look like this. About the only thing that's the same is those trees right there. Those trees my mother put out. She planted them when they were real little. Now look how big they are. Used to be a house there. Now there's no house. This this out here used to be a field, used to be fenced in. That creek right there used to make a figure S through here. Okay. Those fields and those hills back there in the back is where I used to go up when I was a kid and play. Right over there was where Mr. McTavish used to live. He's dead. Most all these folks are. There's Fanny Wadsworth's house there. Fanny used to live. 